he told me, he told me to run on. Heal my body. Heal my body. And he told me. songs like that that'll get you through a hard time. I know we like the, the pretty melodies, but it's some songs like that that'll get you through some terrible times. When depression is getting the best of you and the enemy is running rush hot in your life, you just take to those simple songs. There's a storm out on the ocean and, and it's moving this whole way, this way. way. If your then soul, your soul is not, it's not looking at Jesus you will surely drift away, drift away. Jesus, he will, he will surely drift away. 
song now it's kind of old you got to be over 29 to know this <laughs> you remember this Jesus can work it out Jesus can work it out say Jesus Jesus can work it out say Jesus Jesus can work it out nobody but Jesus Jesus can work it out Jesus Jesus can work it out oh Jesus Jesus can work it out oh Jesus listen to it out. this problem that I had I just couldn't seem to solve. Can't solve. I prayed and I prayed. I prayed. Just getting deeper involved. Uh -huh. But I turned it over to Jesus. And I stopped worrying about it. I turned it over to the Lord. He worked it out. Hey, say Jesus. Jesus can work it out. Oh, Jesus, Jesus can Woo! work it out. Would not move. I had to take her to the upper room. <laughs> that burden that I bore, I kept on wondering how much more. But I turned it over to Jesus. What? Turned it over to Jesus. What? Turned it over to Jesus. What? And I stopped worrying about it. Uh -huh. Turned it over to the Lord. He worked it out. Jesus can work it out. Jesus can work. Say, work it out. Say, work it out. Say, work it out. There you go. Say, work it out. How you gonna pay the rent? Work it out. All of your money spent. Work it out. Little bit to buy some food. Work it out. Baby, you a new pair of shoes. Work it out. And you got a light bill too. Work it out. Tell you what you ought to do. Work it out. Tell you what you ought to do. Work it out. Won't God see you through? Work it out. Won't God see you through? Okay. I'm putting y'all on prophetic assignment. Learn all the old songs. Point to the praise team and say, learn all the old songs. Work it out. Work it out. Work it out. How many of you are facing us? Listen, listen, I want to hear this. Listen. How many of you guys are facing something even as we speak? And when you go home, that problem is going to meet you there. How many of you are you're facing that as we speak? Listen. I want you to lay your hands on yourself and say, Jesus will work it out. Listen, now I want you to touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, Jesus will work it out. Now give God a praise for working it out. Listen, y'all got to forgive me. Y'all got to forgive me, but I feel a praise in my spirit. I don't let a new suit stop me from giving God glory. Because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, I was a, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Listen, I want you to get your communion in your hand. Get your communion in your hand. Hey, how you doing? How y'all doing? Y'all look so nice today. Amen. We're going to take our communion together. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for all you've done. I thank you for the price you've paid. We had a debt that we owed. And you paid a price that we could not pay. Father, I pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you bless these sacraments. The bread representing your body. 
the juice representing your blood. And as we partake in this, Father, let it go for our healing. Let it go for our strength. Let it go for our deliverance. And we declare it so now in Jesus' name. Amen. We will take communion together. Does everybody have their communion? Everybody have a communion that wants to take a part? What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Sing, yes. Nothing comes with to be. What a beautiful name it is, the name Sing of Jesus. Sing that one more time. Jesus. That's beautiful. Say it again. What a beautiful name it is. Yes. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing comes past to be. What a beautiful name. On the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and after he had given thanks, he took it, and he broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. After the same manner, he also took the cup which he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do you as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. What a beautiful name it is. Please, Pastor, the, the ushers will come by and pick up. Name the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a, what a, what a beautiful name it is. What a, what a, what a, what a. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name. What a beautiful name. name. Put your hands together in God of, give God a praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want you to think about one thing God has done for you. And I just want you to tell him. I want you to think about it. It's the one thing that you know it was God that did it for you. And I want you to tell him, thank you, Lord. On the count of three, here we go. You thinking about that thing? Are you thinking about it? Now tell the Lord, thank you. One, two, three. Now give him praise. Amen. We're going to read our scriptures. I know that we've been standing for a while, but I have enjoyed the presence of God. It's so funny that when God has you um, pastor a younger generation and you start singing old songs, they look at you like, bro, we don't know that. We're on that Fred Hammond kick, you know, and let the praise begin. We know that, right? But... <laughs> I like them old songs that I used to hear mama sing. You know those songs they used to have the washboards? They used to. (laughs) 
You guys remember? You guys remember the spoons? The the little hand maraca. Y'all remember? Okay, never mind. Okay, we're going. <laughs> Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Amen. Learn those old songs, praise and worship team. They're so important to us. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we humbly ask of you to take control of this word, Father. Take control of this word, Father. As we kneel before you, Father, I ask of you to anoint, anoint our mouths, Lord, anoint this word. Lord, you be glorified in this. You be glorified in this, Lord. You be glorified in it as we speak the words of life to someone who may not be here ever again. But I pray that these words strengthen and encourage their hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Clap your hands and give them praise. Amen. I know you guys. Do I know you guys? You sing familiar songs. Amen. Yeah, God is faithful. Amen. Let's stand for a reading of our word. Matthew 28, 1 through 6. I feel a healing in the house today. I feel a healing in the house today. I feel it in my spirit. There is a healing. There's a spirit. There's a healing in the house today. Clap your hands if you need a healing and say it is so. And it is so. Matthew 28, 1 through 6 says, In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first of day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keeper did shake and became as dead men. Somebody say dead men. Dead men. And the angel of the Lord answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that you seek Jesus which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. And he said, Come see the place where the Lord lay. I want to use for thought the prophetic mandate I have is to tell you, despite what you are facing, despite what you have been going through, despite what you're dealing with, God's going to let it rise. He's going to let it rise. He's going to let it rise. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Neighbor. I know it's been hard for you. I know it's been hard for but you. But God is going to let you rise. But God is going to let He's you rise. He's going to let you rise. Now give God praise in this place. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. I give honor to God who is the head of my life, to all the beautiful people of God, to my phenomenal, amazing wife, of 28 years. Amen. She kidnapped me when I was just such a little boy. <laughs> Amen. To my sons and everybody who chose to come out and worship today. Do you mind if we have a fireside chat today? Just a little talk. Ministering on Easter is always, or Resurrection Day, is always challenging because some people come out of obligation and some people come out of expectation. Oh, wait, no Ziggy. Yeah, that's Jesus saying, repent and get saved. <laughs> <laughs> repent now. <laughs> so it, it, it's always challenging during Easter time. And out of all the messages that I minister during the year, this is the most important because I am aware that I may not get another chance to speak life into you again. I take this time seriously because I am sure that some of you have been wavering in your Christian walk, especially since the pandemic. And some of us have lost people and you are 
questioning the faith. You're questioning that if God exists, you have adapted a universalism perspective and you're now praying to the universe instead of recognizing the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so I'm challenged on the prophetic mandate to remind you of what Jesus did for us. And I believe that some of your lives as of today will never be the same. God has placed me under this prophetic mandate to tell you that whatever you have been dealing with, whatever has defeated you, whatever has you feeling like you want to give up, whatever has you feeling suicidal, whatever has you feeling like you want to walk away from it all and just get lost, whatever has you feeling like you want to drop off the face of the planet, God said, today I'm going to release you from that burden and I'm going to let you you rise. And if you would give me a few moments, I want to walk you through the passion of Jesus Christ so you can understand where you are and why some of the things has happened in your life. Joe, can you get me my brown bag? So can we just talk? Amen. Can we just talk? Amen. Somebody throw your hands. Say, Pastor, just talk. Amen. God didn't even do that right. Do your hands say, just talk, Pastor. Amen. So the physical passion of Jesus Christ began in Gethsemane at 1 a.m. And the physiological distress was so intense that Jesus' body already started showing signs of shock. Jesus was so stressed that he started to experience a phenomenon called hematidrosis. It's, it's when the body is under so much unconceivable stress that inside of the sweat glands, they begin to explode and blood and water flows down. And it was during this time when he was in anguish, when he asked his disciples, can you Pray for me while I go and pray. And every time he would come back, the disciples would be asleep. And while he was praying, he was asking the Lord. He said, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. And this was a very painful and a very challenging moment for Jesus because he recognized at 33 years old, his life as he knew it on this earth was over. But there was a revelation that Jesus wasn't in anguish only about his life being over. Neither was Jesus in anguish about the massive amount of suffering that he was about to endure. But what God showed me was what really dismayed Jesus was the fact that Judas, someone Jesus loved and trusted, was going to betray him for the cost of a slave. For the cost of a slave. Matthew 26, 14 and 15 says, Then one of the twelve, called Judas Iscariot, went unto the chief priest and said unto him, What will you give me? And I will give him unto you. And they coveted together and sold Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. And this made me think, have you ever shared something intimate and personal with someone and they sold you out just for a laugh? <laughs> have you ever been in a relationship with someone and they promised to love and protect and honor and they betrayed you? One of the most inconceivable pains that is, is the pain of betrayal. 
But you, because you can't reason why that individual would do that to you. You start processing within yourself, what did I do to get you to betray me? When you think about it, Judas was on the boat with Jesus after he walked on water. Judas was with Jesus when he turned the water into wine. Judas was with Jesus when he fed 5,000 with two fish and five loaves of bread. And it was the same Judas that betrayed him. Have you ever been betrayed before? Now, before you judge the person who betrayed you, I want you to think about every single time Jesus told you to do something and you didn't. Mm -hmm. Be, before, before you talk about that no good man or that no good woman, I want you to think about every time Jesus said to do something and you disobeyed him. I want you to think about every time God said honor me and you dishonored him and wouldn't give him your heart. But God sent a prophetic word today to tell you, even though you've been in disobedience, even though you go your own way, even though you don't listen to me, even though you don't honor me, I'm still going to let you rise. I'm still going to let you rise. Then they led Jesus away to stand they led Jesus away to stand before his high priest, you know. He was the high priest. And they struck Jesus across the face, remaining silent when questioned by Caiaphas. And they treated Jesus like a common criminal, though he was innocent. He was innocent. You know, how many of you guys grew up getting whoopings when you was a kid? Oh, don't, don't act like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. I grew up with six brothers and sisters, and we was in a four-bedroom house, so it means we had to share rooms at times, you know, and stuff would break. And my mother and father was uh, breaking forensic scientists. They, <laughs> they can tell how something broke who did it. That, that looked like Sly right there. That, I, I can tell. That looked like something he would do. But every once in a while, I would get a whooping for something I did not do. <laughs> Somebody said, amen. <laughs> and you're pleading your case to no avail. Jesus was convicted of something he did not do. And according to Mark, the Bible says that he was blindfolded. And he was mocked and he was spat on and he, he struck in the face and, and he was abused all night long. But Jesus never said a word. I can tell you when my father, he was 6'2", about 280 and yoked. When that man came down with that belt, it'll make you speak in tongues as the spirit gave utterance. <laughs> I didn't do it. Yes, you did. No, I did. Yes, you did. But Jesus never said a word. Because Jesus knew if he would have spoken in that situation, it would have compromised the integrity of everything he stood for. And for love's sake, somebody say love's sake. He remained silent, realizing that your life was dependent on his silence. If the truth be told, Jesus could have destroyed the high priest by doing what he did to the woman at the well. 
Y'all remember the story of the woman at the well when Jesus walked to her and said, give me a drink. And she said, there is nothing to pull the water up. And they begin to conversate. Jesus asked her, where is your husband? And she said, I have none. Jesus said, no, you had five. And the man you're sleeping with is not your husband. He was accurate in the word of knowledge, in the prophetic word. You think I'm bad. Can you imagine if Jesus rolled up in here? If Jesus came in here and said, somebody's in sin. Everybody here was like, Lord, is it I? <laughs> All that pride to go out the window. Somebody's doing wrong. Everybody in here. Nobody here would be like, it's him, Jesus. I knew you was going to come praise God. I was waiting for you to get in here and check that brother. But everybody in here would be like, Lord, is it I? Because we're all a work of grace. We're... Ah. And despite all of that, Jesus told me to tell you, in the middle of your affliction, he is going to let you rise. In the morning, Jesus is battered and he's bruised and he's dehydrated and he's exhausted from a sleepless night and he is stripped of his clothes. He, he, they, movies paint the passion of Christ so beautiful, but you don't understand that he was naked the entire time. All of his dignity, all of his respect was taken away. And they took Jesus naked and tied him to a, a pole with his hands over his head. And they began to beat him for 39 lashes minus one. And the interesting thing about when the Bible speaks about 39 lashes minus one, they understood it was the Hebra Hebraic law not to beat anyone more than 39 lashes because they understood at 40 lashes people tend to start dying. So they took Jesus to the point of death and let his body recover only to make him suffer all over again. At first, the lashes went through the skin, then the subcutaneous skin, and then it went through the capillaries and the brain and the veins all the way down to his bones. And Jesus became so bludgeoned that he was unrecognizable. But I believe with every lash he took it, see your face. I strongly believe that the whole time... Everybody flashed through his mind, and he began to say, I want to quit. Do you know he had legions upon legions upon legions of, upon legions of angels that could have came down and stopped everything? But he said, I can take it because you need me. Huh? Glory to the living God. They beat him. Despite human, no, there was no human empathy. There was no human compassion. They made sport of it. With this, I must ask you this question, and I'm sure I might offend you, but I got to follow prophetic mandate. Somebody say follow prophetic mandate. Follow prophetic mandate. With this, I must ask you, why do you treat Sunday morning church as if the liberties wasn't paid for by the blood of Jesus? Why do you treat church as if you woke yourself up this morning? As if you're keeping yourself, as if you're protecting yourself, as if you control the bullet from not hitting you, as if you control the car wreck from killing you, as if you control sleeping with somebody that could have given you AIDS or herpes or some condition, as if it was your own grace. Ah! 
Wake up and realize it's the grace of God. If it had not been for grace, there go I. Why do we treat God like that? Some of us have higher standards for ourselves than we do for God. I knew this was going to be a quiet night. When the Lord gave it to me, man, I wanted to preach. He has risen. I wanted to get into that whole deal because it's Easter. No, 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 no. God said, talk to the people of God. Say, don't get mad at pastor. Don't get mad at pastor. Get mad at God. Get mad at God. That's a trap. Listen, you should be honored to worship God. Listen, there are 168 hours in a week. 168. I'm a math geek, yes. There's 168. I can break it down for you, sir. And you can't give God two hours? What if you was in a relationship and all that person can give you was two hours? Y'all be like, ninja, please. <laughs> you better find some time for me. Yeah, me sitting in this house all by myself. You better recognize I get lonely up in here. All right, I'm going to go back to this. <laughs> but he still, at the end of the day, told me to prophesy to you and tell you, despite what you're going through, I love you enough to let you rise. Somebody yell at the top of your voice, let it rise. Let it rise. Then Jesus began his journey down Via Della Rosa. And despite of his attempts to walk upright, his body was so wounded, so crushed, so destroyed that his muscles could no longer contract to caused him to move, and he fell on the pressures of the cross. And I believe that is indicative to say that Jesus had to fall under the pressure so we wouldn't have to. So he could help us because he understands what it means to bear a cross. Then they stripped Jesus of his clothes and now the crucifixion began as if everything else he had been through wasn't hard enough. They offered him wine mixed with myrrh, which was an anesthetic. And he refused to drink it because he knew he had to feel all of the pain that came with the passion of Christ. To be able to feel when you're hurting. Listen, don't let the devil tell you that Jesus doesn't understand your pain. He was 100% God, but yet he was 100% man. The Bible says in Hebrew 4 and 15, 16, it says, For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. Somebody say, he feels my pain. He feels my pain. How can I be your advocate when I don't know what you're going through? One of the things that they teach us in counseling is you don't have to understand everything. Just be able to at least empathize. Just empathize. 
But Jesus knows what it feels like to be betrayed. He knows what it feels like to be lied on. He knows what it feels like to go through physical pain. He knows what it feels like to go through a bout of depression. Do you not know that everything you could ever experience, Jesus experienced it successfully. So when you are in that space and you want to give out and you want to give in and you want to give up, he understands that he intercedes for you. Somebody say he knows. He knows what I feel like. He knows what I feel he like. He knows what I feel like. Then they took Jesus. This, this, this is the part that get me, right? This is the hard part for me. Please don't judge me, but if I would have had angels and angels on my side, and I was prophetic like Jesus, and I seen how disobedient we was going to be, I was like, get at me. Holla at your boy. I bet, start shocking it. <laughs> so they take Jesus, they stretch him out to the maximum length. Find it the impression in his wrist and took what we compare to as a railroad strike and drove it through his skin, through his muscles, through his skin, into the wood until it was stable enough to hold his body. Theologians say that Jesus was about 6'4". I was a big boy. Then they took his other hand and found that same space and took the nail and drove it into his hand far enough so it could sustain his weight. And then they crossed his legs left over right and took another stick and bent the knees and had him sit like this and drove the stake all the way down through his arches. Have you ever had your arch fall? You, you got to be a little older to experience that. <laughs> Y'all be looking at me like, Pastor, man, you kind of OG, but really quick, I was sitting there, and I was speaking to these young men, right, because I was in the mall, and I was looking pretty fresh, you know. I had my Adidas on, you know. I had my nice little cap on, and I seen these young men. I was like, my man, they was like, how you doing, OG? I was like. How you doing, OG? <laughs> I thought I lightened it up a little bit because I was looking pretty soft for a little bit. So I have accepted that I am a triple OG now. Somebody say, it's okay. It's okay. So, <laughs> so what's interesting is that they left his knees bent. They stretched him out so much that the only way he could breathe was put weight in the nails to stand up and pull himself up to take a breath. But every time he would take a breath, body dynamic would cause his lungs to collapse a little bit more. Have you ever tried to take a breath in butter? Have you ever, okay, let me show you what that felt like here. Spread your nose like this. Now, try to breathe through that. Can you imagine that being a feeling through your mouth and your lungs? And he did it for you. Disobedient, disrespectful, entitled, stubborn, ungrateful, stingy. Irreverent, irresponsible, unstable. I can go on because I love the dictionary. <laughs> Somebody say he did it for me. And then while he was dying, 
there's a, a male factor on the right, and there's a male factor on the left. And the male factor, I want to say on the right, said, if you was really who you say you were, you would get me and you out of this trouble. But the male factor on the left said, you know what? That man has done nothing wrong. And I ask you, Jesus, when you get to your kingdom, remember me. This is the part that's deep. Jesus stopped dying. He stayed the hand of death. Pushed himself up on the cross. And told that man, in this day you shall be with me in paradise. I am so glad that despite what may be happening in this entire world with 7 billion people around, Jesus still has time to hear a repenting heart. <laughs> Woo! I'm so glad that he, he thinks enough of me to hear my cry. Have you ever half repented? I'm going to talk to this side, I guess. Have you ever half repented? Yes. Okay, do you know what half repented it means? Okay, you know, Lord, Father, just forgive me. I, I don't know what I've been doing. In the back of your head, you're making plans to go do the same thing all over again. That's what you call a half repent. But he's still here. Your cry. Then he took, they took him down. They put him in a borrowed tomb. Listen, really quick, man. This is the king of kings and the lord of lords, the alpha and omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, the rose of Sharon, the lily of the valley, my, my bride in the morning star. They put him in a borrowed tomb. And I believe they put him in a borrowed tomb for the prophetic revelation so that the saints of God doesn't always have to be renters. Y'all missed that revelation. So we can own something. Every single aspect of the crucifix, of the passion, meant liberties for me. For him to be wounded for my transgressions, bruised for my iniquities, the chastisement of a peace was upon him, and when his stripes are healed, I believe Jesus went through all of that so I can live a life of abundance, a life of healing. They put him in a tomb, roll on a stole over it. But somebody say three days. Three days. Mary and Mary comes to see, check on the grave. And an angel comes down and causes an earthquake and moves the stone. The men fell out. I thought that was funny. Can you imagine the big old Roman soldiers all yoked up like this, sitting back like this, and they see angels <laughs> just falling out? <laughs> Bruh, put the muscles away, homie. The men fall out, but Mary Magdalene, they look, and the angels tell them, come here. I know you're looking for God. He is not here. Jesus has risen. And I came to tell you today, I came to tell you today while you were sitting in church, the Lord dispatched an angel into your situation to tear down every stronghold, to tear down the walls in your life, to tear down the things that are stopping you, to tear down the obstacles, to tear down the stumbling block, to tear down your frustration, to tear down your pain, and tell you uh, that you will rise again y'all missed that word hey. 
High five your neighbor and say, neighbor. Oh, y'all didn't do that right. Y'all got to get y'all Baptist preaching voice and say, ooh, oh, neighbor. I'm going to rise again. I'm going to rise again. I'm going to rise again. Stop counting me out. Don't let the car I drive get you fooled. Don't let the place where I live have you deceived. Don't let the clothes I have on think it's the end of my story. Because sooner or later, I'm going to make a comeback. The Bible says, they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. They that goeth for the weeping beareth precious seed shall doubtless come again bearing their sheaves with them. In other words, if you're down right now, you're about to come up. If you're frustrated right now, God's about to turn it around. If you feel like you want to give up, he's about to renew your strength. Come on, Isaiah, and say, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings of easels. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Say, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. Somebody say, I'll rise again. I'll rise again. Say, I'll rise again. I'll rise again. Say, I'll rise again. I'll rise again. I'll rise again. I may hurt, but I'll rise again. I may be broken. I'm going to rise again. I may be single, but I'll rise again. Headed to divorce court, but I'll rise again. Wearing a borrowed suit, but I'll rise again. Food is low, but I'll rise again by myself, but I'll rise again. No money in my pockets, but I'll rise again. Hallelujah. I'm trying to hold that, that old church of God in Christ preacher in there. But I feel a miracle for you. You've been waiting on a blessing, and it feels it just won't come. Body's been sick, pain everywhere, and it feels uh, that no one cares. Uh, But God said, I got a blessing with your name on it. Touch yourself and say it got my name on it. 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 It has my tears on it. It has my affliction on it. It has my worries on it. I'm trying tonight. I'm sorry, let me go back. As we continue the recourse and to the deep theological discussion about the goodness of Jesus Christ. We have found to thoroughly explain and go into depth about the reinstitutionalizing of the body of Christ. I'll rise again. You about to come up. I received it. You about to come up. I receive it. You about to come up. I receive it. Change Church, we have been in this thing called the 320 experience. Come on, throw your hands like this and say 320. Somebody like. God is about to do. Listen, that's why you're familiar, because God's going to bless you. There's an anointing on your life to bless. Listen, 
God is about to do the exceeding, abundantly, above all you can ask or think. One of the things that I found what was interesting really quick and then I'm done. One of the things that I found interesting was that they took Jesus' naked body and they wrapped it in linen in strips and strips and strips and strips and strips and strips and strips. This is a king of glory wrapped in strips. What's interesting, though, when they saw Jesus, he was in a robe. <laughs> when they said, come see where he lay, come see the strips as evidence that he was here. But when they saw him out, he was fully dressed. What does that tell me? That it ain't how you start. It ain't what you got on right now. But God is going to turn your beauty, your ashes uh, into beauty. He's going to turn. God is about to dress you and bring a glory to your life that you have never had. I'm trying to be good. I'm trying to be good. I want to really leave a good impression for you guys. Oh, he seems very dignified. Very, you know, cool, you know. He's about to turn your, I prophetically declare, and that means something to the people in Saints Church. But I prophetically declare to you that some of your lives will never be the same. I want you to be convinced that God's going to let you rise. Young man, be convinced that God's going to let you rise. Are you listening to me? Be convinced this is not how your story ends. This is not how your life ends. This is not how it ends. This is not how your marriage ends. Those of you who are struggling in your relationship, this is not how it ends. There is love on the other side of this. Parents that are adulting. <laughs> Wasn't it easy? I thought the teenage years was rough. That adulting is real. Because they're old enough to do it on their own, but not smart enough to do it right. Y'all want me to get off that? Oh, okay, okay. Sorry, 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 sorry. There is greatness in your child. There is greatness in your child. I confess over my sons every time I see them. You don't know how many times they came stumbling in the house high as Cooter Brown. Y'all don't know who Cooter Brown is? <laughs> okay. Show him my age again. Show him my age again. <laughs> and I look at them. You are a mighty man of God. I can't wait till you strap up with that championship belt. I can't wait till I can come to your house and eat your food and drink the last bit of your orange juice. Oh, that's going to be a good day. Somebody said that's going to be a good day. When I can open up your refrigerator and drink your juice, let's go home. (laughs) 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 
Look at all the 20 and 30 looking at me like this. <laughs> it should be an honor. Really quick, and we're going to pray. Young people, part of your rising is honoring your mother and father. True statement. Anytime I really need a blessing, I honor my mother and I send her some money. True statement. I send Betty Jean Wallace, and though she has dementia, I make sure she gets some money from Sylvester. And God blesses the works of my hands. If you want to be blessed, get it right with mama and daddy. Whoa, oh my Jesus, Lord, I just took a turn. God's going to let you go. It's cold in here. Y'all feel that chill? It's August. <laughs> Shall we stand? Shall we stand? We're standing. Right from where you are, I feel first the healing. If you need a healing, lift up your hands from where you are. If you need healing, mm, okay, okay, that makes sense. Do you guys give me permission to stay till 11? Okay, can we stay till 11? You know, typically we stay till like 11.30, but we're going to stay till 11. I need everybody that needs a healing to come forward right now, if that's okay. Come forward. Jesus, Jesus, okay. Okay. Wow. Wow. That makes sense. That makes sense. That makes sense. Oh, come on, praise and worship. Come up front. Oh, hallelujah. Bible says, listen, that by his stripes I am healed. By his stripes I am healed. Are you listening, prophet? By your stripes I am 
healed. There are some of you that you're going to have your healing right now. You don't get it. Whenever the prophetic word comes forth and says you're going to get it right now, you start, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Let me teach you that. Let me teach you a prophetic principle. Listen, listen. Have you ever had your child ask you for something and say thank you before you give it to them? That is the greatest form of collusion. When they be like, Daddy, do you mind if I use the car? Thank you, Dad. Bye-bye. That's fine. I said, whenever you believe God for something and the prophetic word goes forward that says some of you are going to get your healing right now, you begin to clap and praise God and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for what you're going to do for me. Okay, good. Okay, good. We got the clapping down. Now I need you to open your mouth and say thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do for me. Now clap your hands and open your mouth you, and Lord. tell the Lord, thank you, Lord. Come on, tell him thank you. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, let me share this with you. I'm going to be transparent with you. At the age of 27, I was pre-diabetic. I had hypertension. I had high cholesterol. I was on my path to be like my father. My father had six heart attacks by the time he was 60 years old. But even though I would feel the discomfort, I kept declaring that I am healed in Jesus' name. I do not have to walk down the path of where my father went, not when I serve a God who is able to keep me. Yes. Hallelujah. He is able to keep me. Now we're going to make this declaration lift up. My God, I feel the anointing. I feel the anointing. I feel the anointing. Speak in tongues and prayer. Listen, we're going to make this prophetic declaration. This is a very prophetic ministry. Those of you who have never followed us, this is a very prophetic ministry. If the Lord tells you in three days, in seven days, in ten days, it'd be going down. Every once in a while, there was a delay. There is a delay, but God always comes through. And I'm telling you that there are people who are going to be healed instantly. And there are people who are going to be healed on the way home. Many of you have pains in this side of your body as I'm speaking. It feels like a knife is stabbing you even as I'm speaking. A knife is stabbing you on the side. But God said that you're going to be healed in Jesus. Jesus name. There are some of you that experience migraines. Migraines. You're going through migraines. God said that you're going to be healed in Jesus name. Mary, grab a mic and begin to minister. Listen, I need you to say this prophetic confession with me. Say, Father, Father, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I thank you. I thank you. First, first, I forgive those who have hurt me. I no longer. Ooh, there are some of you that are being afflicted because you have not forgiven someone that hurt you. You have not forgiven someone that hurt you. And I want you to take a few seconds and forgive that person right now. Forgive. It's not even worth it. Forgive that person. Come on. Forgive that person right now. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. There you go. Let it go. Let it go. It's, it's not worth it. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Yeah. Hey, 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 hey. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Now, listen. Because, listen, because you have allowed this person to hold a place in your heart. They have built an altar in your heart. What it means is an altar is they have begun to control your emotions. They have begun to manipulate how you feel, and they're not even there anymore. But I want you to say this, say, Father, Father in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus forgive, me, forgive me, and I forgive them. And I forgive them. Tear, down the altar Tear down the altar of unforgiveness, unforgiveness. in my life. 
In the name of Jesus, I cast the devil out now. And I free myself in Jesus' name. And I put in its place healing, peace, deliverance, strength in Jesus' name. Now clap your hands and give a praise. Come on, give a praise. Clap your hands and grab a my healing. Give me the oil. With me, Rock. In Jesus' name. Come on. In Jesus' name. Listen. This is an atmosphere of miracles. I'm telling you. Man, God is about to do some phenomenal things in your life. He's going to heal you. He's going to do some phenomenal things in your life. I don't know why you're here, but I know you came here, made a coming for a different reason, but God is about to bless you. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. Lift up your hands and begin to tell God what you Hallelujah. need and what you want. He already knows. He just Hallelujah. wants you to confess it. Lift up your hands and begin to have a conversation with God. Come on, come on, come on. Lift everybody. Lift up your hands. That's all right. That's all right. And all we're going to do. Yes, Lord, I hear you. The Lord said, make another confession. Say, Father. Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. help my unbelief. Help, help my unbelief. unbelief. Help my unbelief. Help my unbelief. The places in my heart the places in my where I'm struggling not to believe you. I'm struggling not to believe. Help my unbelief. Help, help, my unbelief. help me believe that you care. Help me believe. Remove that you care. the spirit of doubt. And I will give you praise. And I will give you glory. And I will lift your name. In Jesus' name, clap, clap your hands and give God praise. Don't get tired in this place. Clap your hands and open up your mouth. Come on, Rob. Listen, who is... Who has migraines? Who's been dealing with migraines? Who has headaches, migraines? Where are you? Where are you? Headaches, migraines. Headaches, migraines. Right in front of you. Okay, come here, Michelle. In the name of Jesus. 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 Now, clap your hands. Migraines. Hey, hey. Reba kise bala kase ramaha. Come, come on, don't listen. Reba kise na na bala kase. Ikra na bo shi na bala kase na na. Se bala kese bala bala. Se bala kise. Come on, come on, come on. Help me set the atmosphere. In the name of Jesus. 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 My grace, go, go! I rebuke you. Say in the name of Jesus. My grace, go. My grace, go, 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 go. You will not afflict her again. I find that demon that is coming against you right now. You are free from that. Not another one. Not another one. Not another one. In the name of Jesus. Not another one. Not another one. And it is so. What side of your head? What side? In the middle. Hey! Yes, say to the Lord rebuke you. My grace, the Lord rebuke you. My grace, the Lord rebuke you. I rebuke that demon that causes these migraines. Say to the Lord, he has forgiven. He has forgiven. And he is free right now. He is free. There you go. There you go. Rejoice. There you go. You're free. I can feel it. You're free right now. You are free. How you feeling? How you feeling? Is your head hurting or is it gone? Won't he do it? Y'all not going. His migraine is gone. Give God a praise. And my God. Look at me. The enemy comes in. Listen. The enemy comes in. Listen, I want you to hear this. The enemy comes in. 
and he's going to present it. And all you do is say, I am free in Jesus' name. And he'll stop tempting you with a migraine. Because the migraine caused you to go into depression and cause you to feel like life is more challenging than what it is. But when you rebuke the devil, you will never have. Listen, I declare to you prophetically, when it comes rebuking, it will leave just as fast as it came. And it is so. This is what I want you to do. Clap your hands and give God praise. You're free, man. How's it feel to be headache free? Isn't it a beautiful thing? Can y'all give God some praise? Oh, my God. The victory. Listen, pain in the side right here. Who's having this pain? In Who here is having this pain? A pain? Yes, come on, sis. Come on. In the name of Jesus. You, you, headache. Satan, oh. You Listen, grab some oil. Kia. Get out my share. Come on. In the name of Jesus, you in the name victory. of Jesus, I want you to anoint her tummy. In both hands, get both hands. Ramashi Kana and begin to minister to her. Jesus. Lift up your hands, sis. Reba Kiseba Naha. Father, regulation. 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 In the name. Regulate. 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 I rebuke every sickness. Everything that comes against this woman of God. I rebuke every cancer. Every disease. Lord, in the name of Jesus. Healing, Lord. Healing now. Healing now. Healing now. And we call it to lift up your hands. Minister to her. Ra, pray for her. Listen. I hear this. Jesus. Yet will I trust you. Yet will. Same tune. I trust you. Same same thing. Yet will I trust you. I rebuke you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. Every illness, every disease that come against that stress, that comes against her, that cause that pain, that flow from the left side of your head. Yes, yes. That causes the flow. It's, it's like a stabbing from the left side. But I rebuke it now. Come out for this woman. Come out for this woman right now. In the name of Jesus. Loose this right now. Leave her now. Give me some hands. Come here, kids. Say. Yes, loose this woman. Say no I more. Not another one. Not another one. Not another one. Not another one. Not another headache. Not another headache. We rebuke migraine. We rebuke it now. Yes. Yo, come here. Reba, finish this. 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 Listen, who else? With the pain. His name is who else? Jesus. With the pain. Is, are you lifting your hands, daughter? Precious. Come up, sweetheart. Come up. His name come quickly, quickly. Is Jesus. We have a baby dedication. I want to get to it, but. Reba, Woo! Take me to warfare. Take me to warfare. Reba Kisha In the name of Jesus. 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 Listen, stay right there. Let's begin to praise God. Listen, there are demonic spirits leaving off of people. He's been healed of migraines. She's been healed. Listen, begin to clap your hands and give him praise. Daughter, where are you? The pain in your side. Yes, in the name of Jesus, in the name that's of your hands, in the name of Jesus. I need you to say this, say, I denounce every negative thing I've ever spoken about my health. I speak health, I speak healing, I speak deliverance to myself. Now, God said, lay hands on yourself. There's a healing ministry in the name of Jesus, and we declare it so now. We declare it so now. We declare it so now. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. And it is so. Finish that. Listen, who else? Who else? Warfare. Real low. Now, everybody else, I'm just going to go back. Come here. Ursula. Are you Ursula, right? Okay. 
You've been in my spirit since I saw you. And, 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 and there was an altar set up in your life. There was an altar set up in your life. So I want to give you a few moments to deal with that altar. Okay? Am I tripping? Okay, I just want to make sure because sometimes I, I, I can get messed up and I might hear and be off a little bit. <laughs> I'd be like, Lord, am I hearing all right? Listen, I need you to deal with that altar, whatever it is, and begin to just deal with it. Talk to the Lord and deal with it because God is going to get, I'm telling you, I've been calling your name out in prayer and I barely even know you, but you have crept into my prayer chamber. Because you are overdue for your miracle. But there has been a satanic altar that has been set up. I don't know if it's unforgiveness. I don't know whatever it is that you are harboring. But you need to let it go today. Let it go today. Let it go today. Let it go today. Say, I let it go. 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 Let it go. Loose this woman. Loose this woman. Loose her right now. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Come off this woman. You are free. 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 The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Say to take your hands off of her. Say to take your take your chains. I break every chain. Point your hands to her right now and say it. We break every chain. Say we break every chain. Say we break every chain. We break every chain. We break every chain. Your breakthrough is now. It is now. Now fill her again. 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 And it is so. And it is so. And it is so. And it is so. Where you been, prophet? Lift up your hands. Thank you, Jesus. I'm just going to listen as I come by you, millionaire. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, I receive it. Are you a millionaire yet? Thank you, Jesus. You are now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. I receive it. Okay. Thank you, And it is so in Jesus' name. There we go. You're going to get it. You're going to get it. You're going to get it. Listen, as I, as I come by you and I lay hands, I just want you to say, and it is so in Jesus' name. And it is so in Jesus' name. And it is so in Jesus' name. And listen, listen, the reason why there are so many people being blessed in this ministry because there's an angel on Change Church. There are angels assigned to Change Church to change your life. Yes. How many people do you see come in this church one way and leave completely different? Yes. Lives turn completely around. That is the angelic assignment over this ministry. When I lay, gra grab a mic, Talene. When I lay hands on you, you simply say, and it is so. Come on, Will. Put that down. Put that down. I need you to walk with me. No, stay here. Stay here. Lift, lift up your hands, and I want you to say, and it is so. Say that, and it is so. And it is so. And it is so, my God. Open his, I activate you prophetically. I activate your eyes. Listen, you were supposed to see the visions that I have saw, but you have not been here for whatever reason. But God said, all right, now I'm opening up your vision right now. Prophetic vision in the name of Jesus. And it is so, lift up your hands, great woman of God. And it is so, and it is so, and it is so. Lift up your hands, and it is so. And it is so, and it is so, and how's it feel to be free? And it is so, and it is so. Deliver me, Lord. Deliver me, Lord. And it is so, 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 and it is so. And it is so, and it is so, and it is so, in Jesus' name. Clap your hands and give God praise. Come on, clap your hands. And... Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Yes, thank you. 
charge the atmosphere. Young man, have I ever prayed for you before? What? Yeah. How is your career going? It's going good? Was there a change after I prayed for you? Huh? Can you get up and give God a praise then, man? Stand up and clap your hands and come get up. Wow. And give God praise. Hallelujah. Somebody say, won't he do it? 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 You're a genius. And the enemy has caused relationships with other men to destroy that genius, to stop your creative insight. But just as good as God has turned you around, God says he's going to open up that genius he's put in you before. Clap your hands and give him praise because it's already done. And it is so. Hallelujah. And it is so. Listen. I have a word for Dana. Tell Dana when he gets married. Is he married? You tell Dana when he gets married, God will open up his body and let him have a child. He will not have a child until he says yes to, his, to a wife and yes to God. And it is so in Jesus' name. And it is so. And it is so. Listen, we want to brake zobo balasin klanti zebeti kasaba zerabatase hakin raboko malini ananabosha. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Annette, how's your senator bid going? Okay. What's the process? What's going on with that? Okay, there's, you're going to meet a white gentleman. Listen, you're going to meet a white gentleman. He's going to be standing right here. He's going to have a, a real bad attempt at a comb over. It's going to be. <laughs> Listen, it's going to be a bad attempt at a comb over. He's going to help you with your senator bid. And it is so. And help me find some land so I can build my church real cheap. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Amen. God is going to do it for you. I'm so glad that he is a healer. He's, he's a healer. Hold on. Let me make sure, Lord. I'm listening. Yes, Lord. Do those houses sell for you yet, Mary? All right. This is what I want you to do. I want you to go get some oil. Get, get, get an oil out of my bag quickly. Yes, yes, the gray one. There's a purple bag. Look in the main part, young man. There we go, Papa. It should be a purple bag. Give it to me first. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come here, Angelique. Come here, I need to give you this as well. Shabasha, come here, Mary. I ring basse, fala la casa. Shabanata si. I want you to put this, anoint every house that you show until it comes to pass. Yoli. God told Yoli had a house, would not sell. The Lord told her in 30 days and it sold in 21. You're going to sell six houses. Now, watch this. I'm going to hit you, though. This is your prophetic instruction. Are you ready? I need you to tie to Cathedral of Praise because the bishop has been laboring. Then I want you to 320 seat here at Change Church. Are you listening to me? And God's going to do it for you. And it is so in Jesus' name. Angelique. 
Phone number or ring call. Oh, we got to talk. We got to talk. I heard some prophetic instruction for you. I'm going to keep that between us. Keep this until after church. Meet me. I'm, I'm not going, I'm not, you know, you know we got to talk. Look, I got you. And it is so. Listen, I'm asking for the family now that we are doing the child uh, dedication to come forward. All the family. Yes, come forward if you're in child dedication. Amen. We're almost done. Thank you guys for being so patient. How do you feel, millionaire? Feels good, right? God is phenomenal. Amen. Look at all these beautiful people. Amen. Come on, spread out. Spread out. Don't be scared. Amen. Don't be scared. Do you know that song? Jesus loves his little children. I don't know the rest. The world. One more time, Jesus, Jesus loves his little. Ba ba ba. This is a very sacred time for me. And let me tell you why it's a sacred time. Because this is a time where we sow a seed into these babies' life. We speak a prophetic word over their life that allows them to help ease the process of them knowing God. And he lifted up his eyes and saw the woman and the children and said, Who are those with thee? And he said, The children which God has graciously given thy servant. Then the handmaid came near, they and their children, and they bowed down. Let's pray. Dear God, we present to thee this child as a gift from these parents, who in gratitude, having received them from thee, now give them back to thee. We are mindful this day of how Jesus called the little ones as lambs of his fold, placed his hands and blessings upon them. He threw his arms of love around them and gave them the kindliest look. We know something of the craving in the heart of a child. Its innocence is a cry for purity. Its weakness is a cry for strength. Its helplessness is a cry for protection. And its heart is a great plea for love. Grant these babies to grow and to flow in wisdom and favor. Preserve them when danger threatens the cessation of infancy and childhood. Undergird and strengthen them in the moments of their youthful temptation and lead them to accept thee. And we declare it so now in Jesus' name. Congregation, you are privileged to witness the coming of these parents to dedicate their children to God in the gracious, loving care of God our Father through Jesus Christ. God, grant them the serenity and the peace to raise men and women of character, men and women of faith, that you will be glorified in Jesus' name. Parents, I speak to you. As you present your children for dedication to God, we ask you, are you willing to rededicate yourself to the maintenance of Christian homes, where Christ shall be honored and the word of God held in reverence, so that these children may on their free choice confess their faith in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You will accept this by saying, we do. I didn't hear that. We do. Amen. You got to talk up. You got to, yes, yes. Where's the godparents? Godparents, how you doing, man? Are you a Christian? Huh? Okay, you're a Christian. This is why. I never dedicate a child to uh, a godparent that's not a believer themselves. It's important because if something happens to them, you're going to have to step in. And you're going to have to raise the child in the admonishment of who God is. Is there another grand godparent? Amen. You can be my baby. Oh, hello, Sugar. 
praise for this. Can everyone point their hands to the baby? Parents, take your knees if you can. Parents, take your knees. Not you guys, but take your knees out, parents. Father, in the name of Jesus, give me the oil wrap. In the name of Jesus, Father, give them the patience, the strength, and the tenacity to raise their children, Lord. Help them in the name of Jesus. Give them prophetic insight on the direction to send their children in the name of Jesus. Give this mighty man of valor, Lord, the insight and the revelation, Lord, to be the man of God that you're calling, not just in figure, but in deed in the name of Jesus. Give this man of God the insight in the name of Jesus how to stand in proxy when the father is unable, Lord, when the mother is unable to raise this child in honor of you. And we declare it so now in Jesus' name. Amen. What is the child's name? Cheyenne Marie Brewster, we dedicate you back to God. We assign the angel to be with you and to minister to your needs that you will never know lack. You will never know lack. You will never know lack. You will never know what it feels like to be abandoned. We pray that the mercies and the strength of God rest on you in Jesus' name. Father, stand up. I give the child to you because if a child knows what safety is, it's going to come from you. If a child knows what confidence is, it's going to come from you. If a child knows what it means to stand up for something, its strength is drawn from you. So I give your child back to you. Come here, little prophet. You got a light. You got a light to it. This is my little prophet. What's his name? Chase Jeremiah Brewster. Lord, we dedicate Chase. Hey, prophet. Yeah, I like this right here. Lord, we dedicate Chase, Chase Jeremiah Brewster to you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, for as a man, Father, Lord, we declare that premature death will never have hold of him. We declare drugs would never have hold of him. Gang violence and, and statistics and institutionalized racism and segregation will not be a weight in his life. He will know nothing but treading uphill. He will know nothing but favor and grace. And we declare it so now in Jesus' name. Stand up, mama. I got you. I give him back to you. Because for him to know the, how to honor somebody, he's first going to know how to honor you. If you want him to be a good husband, he has to be a good son to you first. The standard of integrity comes from you. God, Father, stand up for me. He said, here we go. <laughs> Listen, there's a calling on your life. There's a calling on your life. And in this calling, you will not have peace until you say yes, Lord. I'm sorry. I've been like the bad news prophet today. I don't know what's going on. I usually prophesy good things, right? But he's going to bless you, man of God. Amen. Rob is up here because Rob represents your macro system. What a macro system is, is your church community. That means when you ain't here, Rob going to check for you. <laughs> he's like, ah, oh, Lord. <laughs> this is big brother Rob. <laughs> Amen. Because listen, as men, listen, as men, we need a village to help each other. We are no stronger than the village of men around us. And I want to make sure you know who he is so he can help strengthen you in parenting. Because parenting is going to make you a better man. Amen. Let's point our hands and pray for these beautiful people. Father, in the name of Jesus, the grandparent. Great. Oh, look at you. You look good. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray for the great grandparents. In the name of Jesus, Lord, the relatives, Lord, the friends and family, Father, as they have your way in their lives, Father. Grandparents. Oh, y'all look good. And it is so. 
Amen. These are your best friends. Built-in babysitters. Work them out. <laughs> I speak that over their lives in Jesus' name. So I receive it. I receive it. And it is so. Clap your hands. and what? Uncle. Amen. Another babysitter. Amen. Godparents. How you doing, sir? What's your name? Marvin. Marvin, am I going to see you in church again? You sure? All right. Don't be lying in church. <laughs> that boy is a prophet. He said, on next Easter. <laughs> Clap your hands and give God a praise. <laughs> I told you he was a prophet. <laughs> hey, man, you may be seated. <laughs> hey, man. Listen, we want to prepare to give on this morning. Somebody say it's giving time. It's giving time. Somebody say it's giving time. It's giving time. Listen, for those of you who this is an annual thing when you annually come to church. I don't want you to tip God today. Somebody say, don't tip God. Don't tip God. I have a thing to my unsaved men and women. Don't spend more at the strip club than you will spend in the presence of God. Y'all have been shook up. Hey, hey, what up? Let's start watching. I said it. It's the truth anyhow. You tipping something you will never have. <laughs> Don't tip God today. I want you to sow into this ministry. I want you to sow. And I want you to sow a grateful seed. This is what I want you to do. I want you to get your best offering in your hand. And I'm asking everyone to please stand. Get your best offering. Do not let this Easter pass by without giving God something. For those of you who know and you are fully aware that you have no intentions of coming back, I need you to sow into your destiny on today. Sow into your destiny on today. And as you have an offering, please stand. Everybody get something in your hand. Every, these are our giving platforms, Change Church, Easy Tithes. These are our giving platforms. As you have your offerings, please stand all over the building. If you don't have one, stand to your feet all over the building. This is very important. This is a part of our worship. I rebuke every spirit that tries to change the atmosphere of giving. Haven't you noticed that whenever it's time to give, the devil tries to change the atmosphere because he knows that this is your time to bless yourself? This is your time to bless yourself. Get your offerings in your hand, and I'm asking you to come forward and stand across the altar. We do offering different because I believe that this is your sacrifice. And what you're going to do is you're going to lay your phones or your offering, you're going to lay them at the altar. You're going to lay them as to tell the Lord, this is my sacrifice. If you don't have an offering, if you don't have an offering, come and touch the altar. But come, millionaire, you got to get used to giving, great man of God. Come on up. Mm -hmm. Come on up. Everybody. Everybody, everybody, bring your sacrifice. Bring your sacrifices. Bring your sacrifices. Bring your sacrifices. How's my baby doing? Doing good, huh? Let's go. Won't God do it? How's her breathing and stuff? Won't he do it? He's faithful. Give God praise. That's the God we serve. Listen. <laughs> look at my son. Don't he look good in the suit? Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Amen. Let's put our giving up. I want you to declare this by faith. Speak it over your life on the count of three. Here we go. One, two, three. Lord, Lord I, I confess. confess. I change the gifts and stir of what you have given to me. To your word, I receive financial increase, blessings and favor, miracles and new ideas, concepts and opportunities, favorable settlements, estates and inheritance, unexpected debt cancellation, 
that will increase my resources a hundredfold. Lord, send prosperity now. According to Psalms 118 and 25, I denounce every negative confession over my finances, investments, properties I own and will own in Jesus' name. I declare money comes to me now to fulfill my destiny and aid me in my kingdom purpose. I am not broke. I have more than enough. I'm not living in lack. I'm living in the surplus of abundance. My offering empowers my church to have more than enough. I see by faith for our global expansion that will result in worldwide missions and acts of kindness. As a tither, the devourer's rebuked, my harvest is protected in obedience to your word. I declare and decree that I now live in the overflow. And it is so in Jesus' name. Clap your hands and give him praise. Now, as you're taking your phones, please grab your phones. Amen. Amen. Grab your phones. God is going to bless you. I'm telling you, God is going to bless you. God is going to play some. Oh, okay, you got it. Amen. Grab your phones. God is going to bless you. Amen. Lead, lead, lead that down. I see you, bro. Lead the um, but put that down. Put it down. Put it down. Loose him, Jesus. Loose him. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, go ahead, gentlemen. You're a tither. You're a tither. Amen. Listen, for all the babies, somebody say babies. Babies. We have food and refreshments. Please take some food with you. I don't want to take nothing home. I am on a diet. Please take the food home with you. Do you want to do, do talk about it really quick? Will, can you give him, a, a, give him assistance? Joe, after service, man. You can collect all of this and you can put it in. Okay. No, no. You're good. Yes, ma'am. We have an Easter egg hunt ready for the kids. So if you have children and you would like them to participate, please meet us out here in the front after service so we can get them their baskets. And then we can organize the Easter egg hunt for them to be able to participate and have some fun. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Shall we stand? We're standing all over the building. Amen. I got it, Joe. I got it. Nah, come on. I'm done. How many of you enjoyed the word today? Amen. Amen. God is faithful. Isn't God good? Now, for the little children with the Easter egg hunt, there may or may not be a couple of hundred dollar bills in those eggs. And they may or may not be Monopoly money. I'm just saying. Anyways. <laughs> but all jokes aside, though, for a second. All jokes aside. Can I share with you guys something? So the Bible says that the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. Dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints of the marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. As we pray, as we speak to God, as we are up here giving, as we are before the Lord, as we're taking time fasting and doing anything for God. Hear me when I say this. The tongue of your the tongue of your mouth is secondary to the tongue of your heart. The tongue of your mouth is secondary to the tongue of your heart. And so if you want God to hear you as you are praying, as you're doing anything for the Lord, make sure there is an alignment. And if there is something that is not fully um, surrendered to God, be honest. Be honest. It's okay. If, like, I, for me, there's been things where, like, it sounds wrong to say to the Lord, but say it. Because it's it's a thing of being honest and being, uh, being in integrity before the Lord. So, Make sure you are praying from your heart. This is the best thing you could do is pray from your heart because your mouth, if your, your mouth don't really matter all that much, but it's about what, what, what's going on in here. So make sure there's an alignment. All right. Amen. Amen. All right. Let's, uh, let's read this together here. And again, personalize the word. Put yourself in the word. Like you should be, as you read, as you read in the Bible, put yourself in there. So on the second to last 
next line here where it says servant, everybody's going to shout their name. We're going to read this together. Shout your name right after, right after servant, okay? Ready? One, two, three. Rise up, Lord, and let thine enemies be scattered, and let them that hate thee flee before thee. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Let the command that thou hast spoken concerning thy servant and concerning his house be established forever and do as thou hast said. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for your presence in this place and what you have done for us, oh God, for your sacrifice that you have thought of us. You thought of us personally. You thought of me personally as you were dying for my sins, Lord. We thank you, Father God, for giving us the grace, Lord, to have everlasting, everlasting life unto you, uh, with you, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for it is our reasonable service to make, to give our lives, to sacrifice our lives for you, God, that you may go forward and people may know you, that our lives may reflect you, Father God. Thank you for the grace that you have given us and for what you are doing for us, Lord. Thank you for the provision in our lives. Thank you, Father God, for perfect health, Lord, for, uh, for everlasting finances, that you may be glorified, Lord. Christ being rich made himself poor that I might become rich. Thank you, Father God, for the word that you have spoken over my life, that it may go forth and my life may reflect you, O oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen. Now go live the changed life. God bless you guys.